Hey, how are y'all doing? I hope you guys are having an absolutely amazing, amazing Thursday evening. I'm joined here by the amazing Taylor. Uh, y'all, tonight's going to be good. <laughs> I know I say that all the time. It's because I, one, um, we're always bringing you uh, our students, uh, alumni of the accepted system who have absolutely crushed it, uh, regardless of what their struggles were. Um, and Taylor's going to tell you all of hers tonight. But, but, um, but, but I'm a fan of my students. I'm a fan of them. So I'm always going to say it's going to be great because I enjoy, I enjoy these moments. Um, it's just cool. It's cool to, 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 to look back on all the ups and downs you've gone through for yourself and then being like, oh my gosh, like I actually got to the other side. I actually got accepted into PT school. Um, so, so I'm excited for that. For those of y'all that are new to this page and this platform, uh, my name is Joseph Googie. I am one of the co-founders of Pre-PT Grind. And our job is to get y'all into PT school without wasting time, money, and all that other stuff. So um, that is what we do. And what this is, this is, I believe, the ninth episode of our Pre-PT Inspire series. What we've been doing is students that have gotten accepted into PT school, we're starting to feature them for y'all. But not, not just to be like, oh, they got in, yay, let's celebrate. That, that part's cool. I want y'all to hear the story because like all of us listen to someone that's gotten to where we want to go, right? So if someone's like, if someone says, hey, I went through the same struggle that you're going through right now and I got into PT school, we're usually like much more ready to listen. So um, that's how we're doing the series to inspire the heck out of you, but to show you that it is possible through real stories, y'all. Like I I'm not even doing most of the talking. Taylor's going to do all the talking like she's this is her time. But uh, but but I'm excited. Taylor, before we begin, is there anything that you want people to know, something you want them to know about you, an introduction? What do you want to say to the people? Yeah, so um, well, so I'm originally from Hawaii. I live in Portland, Oregon. So if any of you guys are repping the Pacific Northwest, hit a girl up. Um, but <laughs> this is my second time applying and I got in first time rejected um no wait list no interviews just straight rejections and then the second time was obviously much better um so I'm just kind of here to show you guys kind of what I went through kind of what my story is and what I've learned along the way that's it that's it man so for all y'all that are here live you're in for a treat but but just remember this is not to entertain you um, and, and for those of y'all that are on, we have Warren, uh, we have Kaylin, we have uh, Edward, we have Lazarina. Gr great to have every single one of y'all. Those of y'all that are watching on replay, great to have you guys here. But, but I don't want y'all to be entertained. Like, I really don't. Like, like it's great. It's great to, to kind of listen and be like, oh my goodness, that's so cool. I want y'all to be freaking inspired. I want y'all to feel like you're untouchable. I want y'all to feel like, man, like, even the things that are scaring me the most, like I still got this. Now I have to figure out some stuff because every single person that's coming on this live stream didn't just cross their fingers and just say, all right, let's just, let's just do this. No, no, no. Like they figured it out, but they also went through the same things y'all are going through. So, um, so let's do this. If y'all are ready to hear from Taylor, comment ready below in the comments, comment ready in the comments if you guys are ready to hear from Taylor. Um, and, and then that's it. Let's freaking do it. Taylor, tell us from the top, like before we dive into the, 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 the not so fun parts of your application process of, of your journey as a pre-PT, what led you to choose physical therapy? Like why PT? How did that come about? Yeah. So my journey towards like approaching healthcare started in my senior year of high school, because I had to do a senior project to graduate with honors. And so what I ended up doing was I thought, okay, I don't really know where I want to go in healthcare. I know that I want to help people. And I know that a lot of us get into PT for that reason, to have a good impact on people's lives. Um, but my aunt is actually an OT. So she suggested, hey, maybe you should check my field out maybe you should just give it a little shot. And so what I ended up doing was for the project, I had to do background research, observation hours, like a final paper and a final presentation on like what I learned. And honestly, I loved it. I was like, cool, can great, I can work with kids. This is really great. Um, 
And so I was pre-OT for a while, up until maybe like sophomore, junior year of college. And then I took biomechanics and anatomy and physiology, which were happened to be co-taught with um, PTs like in the field. Like they were our graduate students that helped out with the class and everything. And I was like, oh my God, like, I love this stuff. Like I could do this every day for work and get paid for it. Amazing. So then I was like, cool. PT is for me. Um, you see how I got excited right. like that? I've never yeah, heard right? somebody worded with that. <laughs> Because that's exactly what I felt when I first found out PT. I was like, you get paid to do that? Like, what? I know. I'm like, what? I'm like, how is this, like, possible? I mean, I knew what PT was, but it's, yeah, it's pretty insane. I mean, it's really great. Mm -hmm. um, so from when I made that career shift and that um, pre-professional kind of shift, um, I knew that, okay, like, let's get some observation hours going. I already did observation hours for OT, so I kind of knew the process. Um, so, you know, it's like, okay, like, let me get observation hours in as many settings as I can. I just want to learn as much as I possibly can about this amazing um, profession. So I did that and I really enjoyed it. But for the longest time, I had like a glamorized view of what PT looked like, which I don't know if like any of you guys feel the same way, but even though I did observation hours and, you know, I would have, I would work at Starbucks from six to 10, class from 10 to four and then observation from like five to eight so even though I was like busting my butt and like getting the observation hours in you only really see like a small snippet of what PT actually is when you're observing so I mean you're there for maybe a few hours or unless you have like a set internship or you're an aide or you're an intern or something um you don't really get like a day-to-day -day experience of what PT actually looks like so it wasn't until about a year ago where I got my job as a rehab aide, where I really, really got to see the day in and day out perspective of what PT looks like. So in that job, I work a lot with total knee replacement patients and post-op ACL patients. And especially with those um, subsets of people, you see like the frustration and the setbacks and the benefits and the progression. Um, that PT or that people go through um, and even through it all you know like even as an aide right now you know I'm kind of like on the bottom of the totem pole but it's all good um, I still receive like that feedback and that appreciation and that reward from patients like they're like thank you so much and I'm like I, I, I just you know I'm doing my thing I'm just here to learn you know and they're like no but thank you so much for just being here and supporting me um, and just like cheering me on because honestly like like, this process was really hard and I probably wouldn't have been here without you so even though like I get that and I obviously see that way more towards the PTAs and the PTs um, through the ups and downs I think my job as an aide really kind of solidified my drive towards physical therapy because even though it wasn't glamorized anymore even though I work in like a high-paced high-velocity kind of clinic I still want to choose PT. Like PT will always be it for me. And then take it up another notch. And then I learned from you guys, Joseph. I learned from Greg Todd and I'm like going to do SSPT. And I'm like, holy like crap. Like PT isn't just serving in a clinic from nine to five and doing documentation, which is like what a lot of PTs complain about. I'm like, I could own my own business. Like if I wanted to have a rock gym in my clinic, I could do it. Um, if I wanted like just do clinical stuff, I could do it. Um, if I want to work with dogs, that's a possibility too. Um, it's just, it's amazing how much I've learned in the span of like this past year through you guys and through becoming an aide and everything to like what my why for PT was back then versus kind of what it is now. So it's just, it's absolutely incredible. You're such a rock star, fam. You're, you're amazing. Uh, you are, you are. And um, uh, for those of y'all listening, how many of y'all have been PT aides, PT techs, different names for the same thing? Um, how many of you as pre-PTs have been that? If you have, just, just do the little hand emoji. Um, and I think we posted something earlier where we were kind of talking about, you know, the difference between, you know, being a PT tech versus just observing. But um, either way, if you're ever given the opportunity to, to be a tech, it's a really, really cool opportunity um, or an aid, depends on what they call it. But 
but it's a really good opportunity to see behind the scenes. I, I feel like sometimes when you're shadowing only, you only see the, the surface level stuff, right? You see a few of the treatments, you, you ask a few questions, but when you're an aide, you see everything. You see the good times, the bad times. You see when, when the clinic is a little more stressful, right? Like patients might think everything's great, but on the back end, you're like, oh my gosh, like we're trying to figure out this or whatever. Front end, I, so so it's, it, it's beautiful for you to see the other side of it, um, to really prepare you for it. But the, the, the transition for you as a PT becomes so much easier. Um, so, so I'm glad that you've had that experience. I'm glad you also kind of opened up your horizons as well. But um, before we jump into all of that good stuff, let's go to the not so good stuff. Every pre-PT knows. The honest truth is the only reason why like there's a group of people trying to learn from pre-PT grind or whatever is because we all have fears. We all have struggles, um, whether it's grades, whether it's what we're told, whether it's, it, it doesn't matter. Like we all have something that we're like, this might hold me back from having a shot at getting in. And, and the honest truth is, it, it, if we have like a lot of those, we usually tend to think, well, I guess it's not for me or, you know, or maybe somebody tells us that like our advisor, whatever it is. Anyway, so for you, what was the hardest part? Like, what was the biggest struggle that you faced as a pre-PT? Like, I mean, we know you're in PT, so like we know you're accepted now, but like, what was the hardest part for you as a whole? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing that I struggled with um, and a lot of pre-PT struggle with was my GPA. So for most of college, you know, I did put in the hours. Like I went to tutoring and I went to um, what it's called, like tutoring sessions and things like that. And I would put in the late nights, the early morning, do it all. Um, but I just, I wasn't studying in the right way. Like I was putting in the hours, but the grades weren't reflecting that. And unfortunately, it took me about three years to figure out how I studied best. So it wasn't until like senior year where I kind of had a wake up call. I was like, oh shoot, applying to PT school. Uh, my GPA is not above a 3.0. So um, I was like, okay, it's time to get things going. Um, so after like experimenting and finding what way worked best for me, then I was like, okay, like now the A's are coming in. Um, a little late, but it's okay. Um, so even though, you know, I maintained a dean's list standing for like all of senior year, you know, my GPA really didn't go up that much. Fortunately, it just, I think I forgot what my GPA was. I did actually post it on Instagram, um, but I think my GPA was like a 3.02 at the very end after graduation. Um, so kind of that, for that last bit. What was that GPA? Was it a 3.02? It was a 3.02 for my okay. cumulative. So I just crossed the, th the threshold to like okay. qualify for the minimum for most schools. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my GPA wasn't great. And then as applications approached, you know, I was told by PTs and advisors and schools that no matter like how hard I tried, like my GPA just wasn't good enough or my GRE scores weren't good enough. Um, they were too low to like even be considered. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, people were like, just try something easier. Maybe PT just isn't for you. Hold on, um, hold on. who told you all this? PTs, who else? Start yeah, PTs, on the list. Uh -huh. schools, advisors, um, other students. Cause you know, a lot of people start off as pre-PTs and then kind of see the rigor of applications and applying yeah. and getting in so basically yeah everyone <laughs> a lot of people I mean I was really lucky that my family has always been really supportive of me and I've kind of honed in my circle of people who I can rely on when you know crap starts to hit the fan but yeah that really instilled you know fear in me and my lack of confidence really I think held me back for a long time that I just really at the end of the day just felt like I wasn't good enough um so you know I apply and I was rejected for the first time um the first time I applied and after that I was like okay they're right I need to work on my GPA <laughs> so I remember you guys telling me after I joined the acceptance system that like we can get people into PT school despite having a low GPA and I've heard of, you know, low GPA students getting in. So 
um, I was like, okay, like this is potentially possible. But even though like, even after all the trainings and even after like all of like the wisdom that you guys instill in us, which is just amazing and incredible, I was like 80% there. <laughs> like I was like so close to believing it. Like I really wanted to believe it, but I just, after having like probably, I don't know, 10 years of people constantly telling me like you probably need like a 3.8 GPA to get in because PT school is so competitive um like I didn't really believe it that is until I saw it for myself actually I remember Joseph I had a call with you I don't know if you remember but there was a moment that I remember so vividly that I just like that was the first time that I really truly felt like I could get into PT school so um I had you know getting ready to apply and everything and so I had retaken countless countless classes um and I had reached out to two schools and I said hey here are my stats um would you just mind telling me if these are competitive or not like if these are par up, up to par for you guys and one school said your GPA is on point you're very competitive second school said yeah I mean your GPA is great like if I were to change anything honestly, like your, your application looks like very, very good. Um, and never in my college career has anyone told me that my GPA was on point. So I just remember like, I just cried. I was just so overwhelmed with emotion that I was like, for the first time, I really, really believe that I can get into PT school. And that was just a game changer for me. Oh. Girl, listen, we're, we're going to stay here for a little bit. This, this is big. So, oh my God, you're going to have me standing up. Hold up. Like I'm, I'm going to have to, so, 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 so guys, as we're filming this, I'm in my office. Let me see if I have a permanent marker. There's something I want to show y'all. Let me see if I can show y'all something. As I'm setting this up, because Taylor, I need them to understand this. Like you just hit it right on the nail. For those of y'all watching live right now, how many of you hear so much? Like maybe it's us, maybe it's a friend of yours. You're, they keep telling you, hey, like you can still get in. Other people do it. But, but, but like when you're by yourself, like let's be real, like y'all, we ain't playing around right now, right? So, so like when you're by yourself, you're like, ah, I want to believe it. I want to believe it, but I just can't. How many of you have had that? If you have, say I have, because I'm about to show y'all something. Because Taylor, I'm what I'm about to do right now, I've never done before. So, so like sometimes I just kind of, well, I've done the thing I'm about to do, but I've never had this demonstration before. It just kind of came to my head because of how you explained it, because you're a brilliant communicator. So, so y'all, like, if that is y'all, like, this is a permanent marker, right? Right? So this is a permanent marker. So permanent marker obviously means that if I, this is a whiteboard, if I write on a whiteboard, let's say I, I got this line on the whiteboard. Now, Taylor, tell me, how, how easy is it gonna be to wipe that off? Real hard. Real hard, okay. So, y'all, this is an eraser, look. Y'all see how hard that is? So. I want y'all to understand this. Every belief that you have about you not being able to get into PT school has been taught to you by somebody else. Every belief, it's been taught to you by your parents, it's been taught to you by your teachers, it's been taught to you by your advisors, it's been taught to you by yourself. And what happens is it's like permanent marker. Like, like, me, y'all, like y'all hearing one live stream and being like, ooh, Joseph said I can get into PT school even though I got a low GPA is like taking this eraser and doing this. It's good enough to at least try, but at the end of the day, you got this. You got permanent-ish. And this is all of us. Taylor, you, you just said it perfectly. What I need y'all to understand is this, like, if one, one, this is actually why I love like having students that have had lower GPAs come on here and tell you their story because they're real human beings. Y'all could hit Taylor up afterwards and be like, 
are you like an actress or are you like the real deal? Nah, she the real deal. Go follow her on Facebook. But but, but here's what I want y'all to see. Here's what I want y'all to see. So if I take this, like, so so this is a, a Expo dry erase marker, all right? If I take this, this is what it looks like when you are saying, okay, I, I understand that this is wrong. I understand that y'all, those of y'all that are showing up now, this is a permanent marker on a whiteboard. So I understand that all my beliefs about myself, see, it's not rubbing, are wrong. But for me to have a shot at getting into PT school, I have to make sure this goes away. Because if I don't, every single time I get close to getting myself over to the other side, I will get in my own way. If that makes sense to everybody so far, can y'all comment, make sense? Because I'm about to show y'all something real quick. Because I like my whiteboard and I don't want a permanent marker like stain on it. Because I, I mean, I use it, right? Because that would suck. But like, if that makes sense, say, say make sense. Here's what I want y'all to see next. This marker, this, you know, dry erase marker, this represents you saying, I'm ready to start like, like literally feeding my brain new information. For Taylor, what that meant is that meant she was going to be in the accepted system. She was going to feed her brain new information. She was going to feed her brain new information from her mentors, myself and Casey, her coach, her, her peers, other people that believed in her more than she believed in her. And so what it did, what it did, this new information literally came in and this new information, I got to find a marker that actually works. So let's try this brown one. This new information literally came in and just covered up. Y'all remember, that was, that was a Sharpie. That was permanent marker, right? So, so it literally came in and it just like said, yo, Taylor, we're about to cover you up with everything that you thought you couldn't have as a pre-PT. We're about to cover you up with, with, with like so much belief in you that a lot of the stuff that you've been fed by teachers and faculty and all that stuff has to go away. That's how it works. And so Taylor, I'm glad you said that because for those of y'all listening, I need y'all to understand that. Y'all, this is not an overnight thing. Starting to believe in your ability to get into school is not an overnight thing, y'all. That's what it takes. That's what it looks like, y'all. You, you, you guys are trying to like change something that's been like, like you've been feeding yourself those lies or those lies have been fed to you for years. Like you can't, you can't expect one day to just like, it's all gone. No, it doesn't work like that. So Taylor, I'm so glad you said that. Uh, and for those of y'all that are watching, I hope that made sense to y'all. But, uh, but, but, but Taylor, man, oh my goodness. I hope they heard. I hope they heard. Um, I hope they did too, Joseph. <laughs> man, I, I hope they heard something. Because because I just, ah, oh, I love that you said that. Um, like, tell, tell me more. Like, as you were going through that, like, what else was challenging for you as a pre-PT? I think just, um, you know, having my self-doubts and you know like you said getting in my own way but also not having the right support system like I was relying on professors and PTs in the field who you know I thought were I mean they're still great mentors um but I was just relying on the wrong people like I was reaching out to people that had 4.0 GPAs and had like perfect GRE scores yeah. so when I asked them like what was your process for getting into school? They just be like, no, I just did well in school and it was super easy, got into my top choice. And yeah, I don't know, that's kind of the end of it. And so that made me feel even worse. Like that just made me feel so much little of a person and an applicant that until I really tiered my support system to the right people and people from the accepted system and people that are kind of vibing on the same wave like I'm vibing on, it, it was like game over pretty much. Like I wasn't going anywhere until I figured out who I could rely on and who would push me in the right way. Cause everyone, you know, everyone has good intentions for you. When I talk to PTs, when I talk to people that have gone into school and no one's talking to you like, I hope you don't get into school. Like everyone has good intentions, but hearing the people and really fine tuning who you include in your support system was a major game changer for me. Ooh. 
man. Oh, well, you kind of answered my third question because I was going to ask you what led you to, to, to search for non-traditional mentorship, non-traditional mm-hmm. coaching, which was the accepted system. But you pretty much hit that on the nail. Is there anything you want to add to that? Like, what led you to ultimately say, yo, I got to find somebody. Like, I'm, I'm sick and tired of getting in my own way. I'm sick and tired of having to, like, shoot in the dark again, like I did my first time, you know, applying. Like, like is there anything, like, is there anything else that you want to add to that bit of, of saying, like, this is why I started looking for something different? Yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I realized, you know, I mean, I funded my whole application process the first time around. So I was like, okay, I literally cannot afford to shoot in the dark again. Like something has to change. Mm. So um, I think my lack of clarity, you know, really propelled me. So I was like something, whether it's my community, whether I just need PT cast advice, whether I just need essay editing, I just need something that will help me gain clarity with my application. And that really was what I was looking for. And um, I've gotten that and so much more from the accepted system. I love it. I love Happy it. Happy day. Uh, well, <laughs> I just like when, when people are helped. Uh, and, but, but, but you're like, you were such a superstar waiting. Like, and then it's, it's, it's hard when you don't see yourself as that. Um, that's what's unfortunate. Like, I don't think like even for people watching this live or listening to this as a podcast, because I don't know if you knew this, this is going to be a podcast episode too. Uh, so, so you on the podcast now, check you out. But, but, but the honest truth is like, I don't think people realize that there's another version of them that they haven't tapped into yet. Like, to be honest, if you and I got on a, on a live interview a year ago, your demeanor would have been so different. Oh, totally. Like, not even the same person. You have such a poise, like, like it's, but that just comes from your natural, like, confidence in being you. You know what I mean? But, but most of the time, when we've been fed information about like what we can't have or who we can't be, or the the fact that like as as like a future physical therapist, you know what, might as well choose something else. It, like, the, the more we're fed that, the more we like become smaller in our own heads, like. The more we second guess every little thing, the more, you know, like it's, it's, it, it's such a cycle, but it shows like, I'm sure if we had done an interview, you, you would have kind of, you know, a bit been quieter. You're mm. like a little bit like, you know, yeah, you know, I'm trying, my <laughs> do, you know, I, I, I believe kind of <laughs> like that would have been you, but now you're coming in here with authority, not, not forced. It's just you. And so that's the version of like ourselves that most pre PTs don't like know how to tap into like we don't even recognize that version of us exists and to be honest we don't realize that that's the version of ourselves that we have to tap into if we want to have the best shot of getting in i'm just saying totally. i mean it's just facts it's just facts mm-hmm. and so 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 let's let's kind of dive into like as you were kind of going through yes we went through the accepted system you absolutely destroyed it like, tell us about the days leading up to like your final, like your acceptance. Like, like, tell us about that day. What did that look like? What did it feel like? I, I, I love it when we get to this part of the series because I want people to dream a little bit. Like, I don't think we spend enough time as pre-PTs just dreaming about that day. What, what's it gonna look like? What's it gonna taste like? What's it gonna smell like? And, and so I would love for the people to hear and see it through your experience. What was your acceptance day like? It was absolutely wild. I mean, I was at work. So I was, you know, doing my stuff on the computer. And then I refresh my email and see um, your admissions decision. And for some reason, like, this might have been like my negative self talk or like um, previous traumas coming. And I was like, oh, shoot, it doesn't say acceptance. Oh, no, this is going to be bad. And then I click it and it says, congratulations you have been accepted um with a scholarship and this is my top school um so I just I read that so fast and I'm sitting at my desk like patients walking around PTs walking around and I just started like crying just absolutely wow. crying and one of my PTs uh walks by and she's like are you okay I'm like I just got it on my top <laughs> and I got a scholarship <laughs> exactly oh my gosh it was 
it was absolutely incredible. Like I had to go in a private exam room and just cry for a few minutes because I literally remember like being, I used to live with my ex-partner and honestly, if I hadn't had this conversation, it wouldn't have sparked my whole pre-PT like journey. I was like, should I retake all these classes? Like, I don't even know if this is going to be worth it. Like, what if I don't get in? What if, you know, what if, what if, what if, what if? And my mind just starts circling back to all the times that I'm like, I worked full time. I took night classes. I took weekend classes. I like had like 12 hour days and it finally felt like all of my effort was worth it. Mm. And just that feeling of like, not even relief, but like the real work starts here was just, it was so incredible. Like I know you, you and Casey always talk about like, yeah, you know, like when you get your acceptance, it's going to be like this huge moment and like, finally, finally, finally. And I was like, okay, cool. It's going to be great. But I had no idea how overwhelmingly amazing it would be. Oh yeah. Happy cries. (laughs) First of all, I'm so proud of you. Uh, can, can we show her some love, y'all, for getting to that moment? Um, can we just show her some love, like little, you know? But, 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 but of course it meant a lot. Look at what you had to go through before. Mm-hmm. Look at what you had to experience before. You had an entire cycle that you funded on your own where things didn't go the way you wanted it to. Um, you, you had doubted yourself so hard not just because of yourself because of what you had been fed like when when people you look up to don't believe in your ability to get the thing you want it's heartbreaking let's be real like like it's heartbreaking you're like shoot that's what i wanted but dang if the person i'm looking up to whether it's my advisor or whatever like if they don't see me being able to do it then who am i kidding right and so, exactly. so, so it's, it's such a difficult thing, but when you get it, it's like, it's like a mix of emotions at once. It's like, it's like, first of all, like shows them, <laughs> but like, but I don't think it's more that I, like, I think it's much less of that. I think it's more like, like just gratitude. It's like, man, I'm so glad that I didn't cave into that and, and quit. Mm-hmm. I'm just so grateful and, and all of that at once. Plus you realize, oh my goodness, I'm actually in like, like, like all the stress I've been going through doesn't exist anymore. Like I'm like, it's, it's crazy. And then the scholarship on top of that, it being your number one school, like that's so much all at once, but, but you don't get that moment un- unless you push through um, to get there together. So, so for that, I am so incredibly impressed by you. Um, and, and, and I hope people heard that bit. And I hope they're just as motivated to keep pushing for themselves. In fact, for those of y'all listening, here's something I want you to write down. I want y'all to comment this because it's not for me. I'm already, I'm already a physical therapist. It's not for Taylor. She's already in BT school. Um, it's, it's for y'all. I want y'all to comment something that we usually only have our accepted system students say a lot. I am PT school qualified. I want y'all to comment that below. I want y'all to comment that below. I am PT school qualified. Um, the reason why we say that is because it, it, it's hard. It's kind of like the, the Sharpie. It's kind of like what Taylor said, where you, you've just been fed a whole lot of information over time and you just believe it. It's what you're exposed to, right? Whatever you're exposed to always makes sense eventually, right? So you've just been exposed to it so long that, that now you're, you're trying to unwrite it and then you go back to, you know, reserve, reserve, like just go back to those same beliefs, those same false beliefs. And, but 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 if you start saying to like saying to yourself, I am PT school qualified, you'll realize that man, maybe, maybe, maybe Joseph and Casey aren't lying about my ability to get in. Maybe Taylor's not lying. I mean, shoot, it was her story. Like maybe, maybe there's something to this. Maybe I'm maybe I'm not letting myself step into like the position that's already designed for me. Maybe I'm holding myself back. Maybe my fears are holding me back. Maybe my belief that the worst possible scenario is bound to happen is is, is setting me back. Y'all, you have to start believing. I am PT freaking school qualified. Like, I I really don't care what your GPA is. I I really don't. Like, you think I would, but I don't. Like, I I think I've just seen the the full range that now I'm just like, like, Casey and I interviewed someone that had 
case, I don't remember. I think they had like a, an undergrad, didn't they have like a 1.7 something GPA? They were not in the accepted system, but, but they're like a good friend of ours now. He's a physical therapist. Y'all, like we've seen the full thing. And so, so to understand that there's really nothing, if y'all want this, if y'all want to sit in the position that Taylor's in right now, y'all got to understand that y'all can still get it. Y'all can still get it. I'm not saying that just to say it. Shoot, I wouldn't be saying that this long just for my health. Like, I'd rather be watching a movie if, if I was lying to y'all. Like, you know what I mean? And so, so y'all, y'all have to understand if y'all want it, you can go get it. Now, is it going to require a few different things? Of course. But, but understand that, like, hearing a story like Taylor should inspire y'all to say, yo, she freaking did it. She heard the same stuff I'm hearing. Maybe, just maybe, there's something to this. I don't know. You choose. Hmm. Well, Taylor, if you were talking to the younger version of yourself, let's close with this. We'll make this the last, the last, last question. Um, and for those of y'all that are listening, um, I have an announcement for you at the very end. If you're like, I want to start leveling up right now, but, but, but Taylor, like talk to you last year, today is January 16th. Talk to Taylor that like in January 16th of 2019, when she was still like in her head, like talk to that version of you because that version of you is actually sitting right now, watching this right now. They're thinking the same thoughts you were thinking a year ago. What would you say to her after everything you've experienced? I think the first thing I would say to her is undoubtedly don't be so afraid of failure mm. because failure has taught me so incredibly much through this process like failing to get into PT school failing to get an A on every test failing to meet the expectations of getting in the first time um, I think failure is such an integral part in our growth as just people I mean pre-PTs obviously but as people in general. And I think for the longest time, I really pushed anything that would give me like a chance of failing away. Like I was so scared of failing that I just didn't even try. So, so for the longest time, I was like, I'm not even going to apply to PT school again because I'm scared of being rejected again. I'm scared of my family telling me like, okay, like, come on. Like, when are you going to start your life? But I think like undoubtedly without this process, without having to take the classes, without having to put in the grit that I've put in from failing, I have grown into such a more like amazing, driven, like stronger person because of that. And I undoubtedly like wouldn't have undergone that growth without failing. So I think like, I think a lot of us are like scared of like for me, I'm scared of rock climbing because I'm afraid of falling off the wall and like looking dumb. But it's like without falling off, you can't really figure out how to improve yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of us are scared of the judgment of the, you know, um, scrutiny from others of how others will perceive us of our, you know, self-confidence. Um, but failure is so important. And I really would encourage everyone to just let yourself fail because that's how you learn. She got into PT school, y'all. She definitely knows something. <laughs> uh, and Taylor, first of all, you you told me earlier that this was your first live stream, huh? Yeah, this is my first live stream. Girl, you are a natural. You are a natural. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're you're phenomenal. Like you you're just poised and shit. Like I love it. I love it. So um we should do more live stream interviews together by the way oh I'm, my god that'd be I'm great just saying, you know you, you <laughs> let me know when you want to be interviewed and you can inspire anytime me. anytime hey, sir, sir. i appreciate you and for those of y'all that are watching right now hey listen like we want y'all to level up i hope that tonight y'all realize man the, the the beliefs that i've been telling myself the ish that i've been hearing from other people it's just not true now you can decide whether you want to believe that or not it's like the marker. I mean, it's up to you. But this Sunday, we're doing a training that you will not want to miss. Like I'm emphasizing that because I mean it. I mean it. We are doing a, like, trust me, I know what's in it because I'm doing the teaching. But we have a master class this Sunday 
at 12 p.m. Eastern time. That, that means if you're on the West Coast, that is 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Eastern, well, Pacific time, right? 9 a.m. And, and on Sunday, we are doing a masterclass where we are literally going to show you the steps we use to get our last 100 students into PT school. Literally, we're, we're just going to show it to you. And if you've ever been on a training of ours, this is brand new. Trust me, you've never seen this training before. So y'all want to be there. This is, this is next level. So if y'all want to level yourself up this year, if y'all want to say, I'm tired of, like, I'm tired of excuses. I'm, like, I'm, I'm done with them. I'm done with them. And I want to join Taylor on the other side of where she is right now, where she's cool, calm, and collected, can do a live stream in her sleep. Look, look at that. Look at that. She's like, mm, check me out. Like, if that's what you want, then you want to be there on Sunday, but you have to register because it's not going to be on Facebook. It's not going to be on Instagram. It's not going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on a completely different platform. You want to register, go to the link that PrePT Grind, oh, that's a cool company, the PrePT Grind ju just commented below, www.levelupthepreptcom Yo, if you have not registered, do it. If you can't make it live, register still so you can see the replay. Like those are the only people that get to see the replay. So if y'all want to level up, we'll be there. If you don't want to level up, then don't be there. I mean, it's your call. But, but the biggest thing is we want y'all to win big if you want to win big. Taylor, I appreciate you. Can we give her another round of applause, y'all, for taking time out of her evening? Well, it's pretty much like supper time for her, you know. It's, it's like early. It's almost dinner time. It's, it's not that late. Yeah. <laughs> it's late for you. Thank Yo. you for being on here. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. For those of y'all that are watching, let's show her some love once again. Thank you so much, Taylor. I appreciate you. Real talk. Let's plan more live streams. This is, this is let's good. Let's do it. I am I so down. <laughs> All right, y'all have a good night. See y'all on Sunday. Much love.